I'm Farhan Dalla, transformational trainer, and welcome to Elevate Your Life, a transformational podcast, an invitation to take the journey towards your deepest self. It is my intention to inspire you to connect, move, and meditate. We'll tap in, tune in, and dive in, and together learn and reflect from authentic, real, and transformative conversations. Let's get started. Welcome back. I had some time to digest a bit of episode one, and uh, I'm feeling a bit better now that it's out in the world and in my own words. That was really hard, but not as hard as what I'm about to share with you today. Today, I want to discuss what happened the day my mom found out I was gay. And uh, I want to start by saying that my mom came from a pretty sheltered, simple background. She was born in Dar es Salaam, Tanzania, uh, like myself, and she grew up in a household with her immediate family plus many extended family members. Picture this. Her father had eight brothers and one sister. Her home consisted of her parents, eight uncles, their wives, and their children. Yes, it was a really big house. They also had animals like dogs, cats, and even a donkey. Her simple life included time with her family, friends, going to mosque, the beach, and movie theater. She wasn't versed in politics or news events. Again, she lived a very simple life. Whereas my father grew up under modest conditions. He was quite active in his later years in politics and keeping up with world events. Shortly after marrying my father, we, that is my parents, two brothers and sister, migrated to Canada. My dad was a major world event follower who read the newspaper every day and watched the news twice a day. It was always the 6 o'clock and then the 11 o'clock news in our household. Though my mother never really engaged, she did pay attention to what was happening in our world. But till she came to Canada, she never heard of the word gay. She never knew one gay person back home. No one ever said the word gay in our household. We were a religious family that went to mosque regularly. And though there was never anything said against gay people in our faith, there was this unspoken understanding of how my dad felt. It wasn't what he said as much as what he didn't say. Like I said, we were a traditional family in many ways. And as with any traditional family, the values of you must get married, you must have children were expected. I am the youngest of four kids. All my siblings were married by their mid-twenties. And they were well on their way to starting their families by the time I hit my early teen years. Mind you, there was a big age gap between us. But the pressure came down on me to follow that traditional path very strongly. I finished both my degrees when I was 27. As I immersed into the profession of physiotherapy, which is what I had my educational training in, I was just as invested in my time and energy in my fitness career. I dodged the when will you get married questions with, I am really busy working. And I was. I worked full time as a physiotherapist. I taught fitness classes throughout the week. On weekends, I was often traveling to teach or presenting workshops for Reebok as a Reebok master trainer. I was working on a TV show, writing for different fitness publications. I buried myself in my work, but I loved it. It was also a way to distract myself from facing my sexuality and also answering questions from my parents. Now, when the article with my picture came out in the Globe and Mail, I was in my early 30s. 
According to my parents, I was getting older and it was time to settle down. My mother often talked about my wedding day. I guess every parent has dreams for their children. My mom had put aside jewelry for my bride. It was the jewelry she wore on her wedding day. She wanted to pass that jewelry as part of her legacy to my wife. The burden of all of this was weighing me down. I held information that I knew would not only disappoint my parents, but take away from my mom the way in which she dreamed that part of her legacy would be passed on. Every conversation around the jewelry was stressful for me. In my mind, I thought I could avoid coming out to them. What was the point? It would only hurt them. But at the same time, I felt like they didn't know me. They didn't know who I really was. It tortured me to keep the secret, to live a secret life. But I was also scared. I think my biggest fear was that I'd be rejected by my parents and my family. And in hindsight, I think I had already rejected myself. But in working with my spiritual therapist, I was able to come to a place of self-acceptance and even self-love. Recently, actor Noah Schnapp from the series Stranger Things came out. He posted a message he received from his grandfather on social media that read, Hey Noah, I became aware today of your public announcement that you are gay. I just want you to know that I love you the same, and I'm happy for you to be open and to be yourself. Just be proud of who and what you are. Iris and I are supportive of your honesty and ability to express your true self. Love you to the moon and back. To which Snap expressed his love for his supportive grandfather, writing on the caption, I love you, Grandpa. Though I'm really happy for him. I wish everyone's coming out was received with unconditional love. I have to be honest and say my experience was different. I'm going to take a deep breath now as I talk and relive what happened the day my mom found out I am gay. I think I was in my early 30s. I can't remember the exact year, but we were coming back from seeing my mom's cousin from the hospital. We got the news that she was end stage and we were feeling pretty emotional about the news. We were feeling the heaviness surrounding all of that. As I started to pull up to our driveway, she brought up the topic of marriage again. Baron, please tell me, why? Why aren't you getting married? What's the reason? I was completely blindsided. Why was she bringing this up now? To which I responded, Mom, let's, let's talk another time, please. I tried to dodge her, but she knew how busy I was. And getting an opportunity to talk to me was very hard. I was always working. We barely crossed paths. From the tone in her voice, I knew she was very worried about me. And this was a rare opportunity to have me alone, and she wanted answers. Is there something wrong with your health? She asked. I said, no, mom, I'm fine. Then what's wrong? Why don't you get married? And then came the words I didn't even think she had in her vocabulary. Is it because you're gay? And if you are, then that's shameful. Thank God we weren't facing each other when we were talking. I was sitting in the driver's seat, and 
and she was in the passenger seat. But I could see that she was looking down because she wanted to avoid looking at me in the eyes just as much as I was trying to avoid looking at her. My heart must have felt like it stopped. This was it. A conversation I never wanted to have. I wanted to die. I felt like I was dying inside. I was in my car, trapped, couldn't get out of this one. She got me. This was it. Why would you say that? I was going to deny it. That was my first reaction. She had definitely been keeping a close mother's eye on me, more so than I realized. She said that she saw on the news that men were getting married to other men, so she figured it was because they couldn't find a woman to get married with. My poor mom. She was so sheltered in many ways. So I took a deep breath and had to explain what it really meant to be gay. I said, Mom... Do you know how it is with you and dad and the way you feel about him and each other? Well, I don't feel that way about women. Only with men. She said, I didn't know these things existed in this world till we came here, meaning Canada. I don't know what I did in my life to deserve this punishment. And now enter the feelings of guilt. Well, I have to tell your father I can't keep this from him. And I just thought, oh my God, mom, no. Talking to my mom was hard enough. I couldn't handle the questions or the judgments from my dad. My world felt like it was ending. That's what it felt like. I was thinking in my head, I have to move to another city or better yet, another country. That's all I kept thinking about. I have to move, essentially run away. It felt like we were in the car for hours. I have no idea how long we sat there. But I knew that moving forward, nothing would ever be the same again. The rest of that day is a total blur. I wasn't sure how or when mom was going to tell my father. And now that was hanging over my head. And then the shame that I had been feeling became very real because of her words. I had brought shame to her and the family. A gay son for her meant that God was punishing her for something she did. Even though she was religious, this was her interpretation of her God, not because of our religion. I knew that to be true, but I carried the guilt and the shame anyway. And to be honest, I still struggle with that today. I didn't hear the words that Noah Schnapps got from his family. Instead, the projection of my mom's and father's beliefs were put upon me, and I've been carrying the heavy baggage. I realized that once you come out, you need to give your parents time to process. Mom had lost her dreams. I wasn't the son she wanted. I imagine she had all these hopes for me, and much of that was gone. She also learned what it meant to be gay, and I knew that in itself was a lot for her to process. I was the first person to ever come out in our family. This was not something that I wanted to be a trailblazer in by any means. Mom did have the conversation with my dad. Even after he found out, 
all the conversations were either between mom and dad or mom and myself. My father never spoke to me, never about this issue, not once, not a word. My timelines are blurred, but at some point she came back to me with my father's reaction. She said when I told him, his response was, my son has this problem? I said, problem? I rolled my eyes. He thought I had a disease, a medical condition that required medical attention. And his solution? She said, Daddy says we can take you to India and find a good doctor to help you. I said, a doctor in India? I said, Mom, this isn't a disease. She insisted. She said, Farhan, let's try. I could feel the desperation in her voice. They saw me as broken, as sick, and I don't even know how they even classified my illness. Was it physical or mental illness? I didn't even know where they did their research to come up with that solution. I didn't want the details. I didn't need a solution. I just needed love and acceptance. I knew I had to be patient and give them time. But I shut down the topic of getting medical attention or any sort of medical treatment. Mom, being a religious woman and with strong faith, turned next to speaking with members of our community who are knowledgeable in regards to our faith. And after speaking with them, she came back to report the advice she was to give me, and that was, tell him to get married anyway, and that there were a lot of women who would consider marrying him. Oh my God, I didn't need a solution. I just needed love and acceptance. It was clear to me that they were really concerned about what others were going to think about me and our family. That said, <clears throat> I won't go into details, but our family wasn't perfect. And in my opinion, there are things in our history that happened before I was born that seemed far worse than me being gay. As time went on, I figured this was something that we, that is mom and I, weren't going to talk about anymore. My sister and I did have a few conversations about how mom was struggling and about the jewelry. And she said, just let mom decide about the jewelry, but that she was on my side and there to support me. At least I had one person in the family who had my back. And she did the best that she could. But I could tell my sister was processing a lot herself. And then one day, my dad came to me with an offer, a financial offer. Mind you, he didn't even mention the part about me being gay. We never had that conversation. But he was inquiring about an eligible wife for me, the daughter of a former co-worker he knew from back home in Tanzania. The family was living in Vancouver. He had never met my potential life partner ever, but was convinced she would make the perfect wife for me. When he approached me with the idea, I was completely thrown off. He clearly had given this a lot of thought. He said he would consider paying me to marry her. Outrageous, right? He was willing to pay money to make this issue go away. I couldn't help but be curious about his offer. I mean, what was the price tag for me being gay? How much was he willing to pay me to marry someone and a stranger no less? Let me be clear, I was never going to take the money, but I just had to know. So I said, Dad, how much? He offered me $25,000. This is where things get blurry again. 
likely a response from the continued trauma. I said something to the effect that that wasn't enough. But I do remember immediately calling my sister for reinforcement. She was living in Vancouver and I called her freaking out. And I said, how can dad consider I marry someone he's never met before just because he knew the family from back home? He even offered to pay me to marry this person. The whole idea was so archaic to me. But keep in mind, my parents' marriage was arranged. However, I did not need my dad playing Indian matchmaker. My sister said, just leave it with me. At that time, my dad's sister was also living in Vancouver. My dad called her on the marriage-making assignment since she knew the family as well. I don't know all the details of the conversations that took place, but my sister and aunt got together. I don't know how my sister was going to pull this off, but I had to trust her. A few weeks later, my sister called me. She said that her and my aunt went to the mosque that the family went to. They met with the family, but didn't tell them that they were there to scope their daughter as a potential wife for me. They got to meet the woman my father was convinced would make the perfect wife. But for some reason, my aunt didn't approve. In fact, she called my father to say there was no way this woman would be a good match for me. I don't know the reasons. I don't need to know why. But the universe was on my side. My sister called and confirmed. She said auntie was dead set against the match. We both were relieved. I didn't need to know more than that. I may have dodged the $25,000 bride, but the issue didn't go away. My dad went radio silent after that. I was thinking maybe he gave up, but my mom, she hadn't. A few years later, mom and I were sitting on the couch watching TV, just the two of us. I guess she had been thinking about her mortality both mom and dad were aging. I was noticing them slowing down, and dad was having a lot of health issues. Out of the blue, she turned to me and she said, Farhan, if after we die and they find a treatment for you, promise me you'll take it. I looked at her and I could see this was her last effort. She was clearly still struggling and likely felt that everything and everyone, including me, had failed her. I just looked at her and I said, yes, I'll take the treatment. I gave her the one thing she needed and that was hope. Hope that I would be okay but it was a false sense of hope that maybe modern medicine would find the gay cure. And if they did, I would take the treatment, the treatment for what they still thought was a disease. I gave her what she needed, but I knew in that moment I had completely betrayed myself and something I've always regretted. She got what she needed. I still needed love and acceptance. After dad's transition, I spent a lot of time with mom. I became her full-time caregiver for about five years. And during that time, COVID hit, and the both of us were locked down. I couldn't work because of the risks associated with exposing mom. It was just the two of us. I wanted to ensure that she stayed healthy, so I made her do exercises every day to keep her active, and we watched a lot of TV together. We generally loved home renovation and organizing shows, 
We also watched family sitcoms and reality shows that themed on fashion and makeovers. There were a lot more shows that had queer-based characters and themes than when I first came out. I had been out approximately 20 years, and back then there was very little queer content on TV. Things had changed, and I wanted mom to see that queer people are a normal part of society, that we didn't have a disease and that I was normal just the way I am. I purposefully put on shows like Queer Eye. When there were two men that were together, I let her know that they were a couple. We watched Nate and Jeremiah on HGTV, two gay husbands and interior designers who have their own show. I told her that they were my favorite interior designers. They are two married men with two children, a modern-day family. And I pointed that out to her. I made us watch shows where there were same-sex couple weddings. I just wish there was more queer content on 20 years back. Maybe it would have made a difference. Who knows? But what I do know is that as we watched together, I think that perhaps it started to open her mind. I can't be sure because she never said anything. But I do know that my mother was very opinionated. If she disapproved of something, she would not hesitate to vocalize her thoughts. Did her silence suggest a possibility of tolerance, if not approval? I'll never know. What I do know is that I was the one that took care of her. I may not have been the son that she wanted, but I was the son she needed. On October 28th, 2020, mom's breathing was labored and her ankles were swelling. I had a feeling that the end was near. But I really wanted us to have some time together, some more time together, as much time as possible. If this was going to be our last time together in our home, then I wanted to control as much as uh, as much of our final moments as possible. I knew that once I called for that ambulance, everything would change. I made us breakfast, and we sat and we had a really nice talk. And then I said, Mom, should I call the ambulance now? She said, okay. I have made many 911 calls in the past between mom, dad, my grandmother. But this one seemed so final. I took a deep breath and I dialed. While we waited for the ambulance, she was sitting in her wheelchair. And I got on my knees and I put my head in her lap. And I started crying. And I said, Mom, am I a good son? And in her typical sarcastic voice, she said, No. And I looked up at her and she said, did you have to think 10 times before asking me that? As if to say, why would you even ask me such a question? Isn't it obvious? Even in her final hour, she never lost her wit. And I said, yes, wiping my tears. I laid my head back in her lap and she rubbed my head like when I was a little boy. I knew what she meant. I guess I already knew the answer to that. Maybe I didn't hear the words that Noah Schnapp received from his grandfather, but maybe this was her way of letting me know she loved me. Maybe I finally felt like I got the love and acceptance I always wanted. Maybe. Mom transitioned the next day. 
It's been about two and a half years. So where am I today? Talking about my experience confirms that I, I still carry that shame and guilt, but I'm working on it. And I've also been working on giving myself to me, from me, all the love and acceptance I felt I didn't get from my parents. Since mom's transitioning, I've done a lot of reflecting, and I feel like I never really lived my life to my fullest. As I said in episode one this year on New Year's Day, I started a vision board, and at the top, I have written a statement for what I want 2023 to be for me. And it reads, I am stepping into my wholeness and living my life to the fullest expression of who I am authentically and unapologetically. For many years, I dimmed my light, hid, went invisible, especially around my family. I'm still discovering what the expression of my true self feels like my full, authentic self. And I think sharing my story this way, on my terms, in my words, is a part of the process of stepping into my wholeness. If you've been listening till now, then let me invite you to continue to journey with me as I share with you the evolution of my story. I am curious. I wonder how this is going to all turn out. I'm Farhan Lahala, and this was my coming out story. Thank you for being here with me. There is more to come. I'm Farhan Dalla. Thank you for taking the time to listen to today's episode of Elevate Your Life, a transformational podcast. I hope Today's conversation has elevated you in some way and inspired you to connect, move, and meditate. I'd really appreciate your support by following and rating this podcast. Come back soon and join me for another transformative conversation.